at it um, with beautiful goals, beautiful reaction, even when we conceded the goal and we just came back and we score again, the mentality was, uh, was there today. Does it help having someone as good in front of goal as Cristiano is? <laughs> I mean, everybody knows Cristiano. I mean, I cannot, there's no need to talk about him. You know, that's, that's what he does. Uh, um, he wasn't there last game, he comes back, you know, playing three goals. Everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say about the reaction? You've touched on it already. The reaction across the board after what happened against Man City. No, it was it was good today. I think it was good. You see, you can hear the fans. I mean, the fans were pushing goals, and even the fans were feeling it. I think today was a, a very good performance as a team, um, and a very good reaction from the from City. Did yeah. you fear the worst at two two when they equalised? <sighs> to be honest, no, 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 no. We. I keep believe, we keep believe. You know, we stopped playing for some reason when the when we conceded the the second goal, and uh, we just went back again, back playing because that's, I mean, we're good at this, and uh, we have to trust ourselves, and we can hurt them anytime. Why do you think that was then? Because it was it was almost similar against City. It looked like a performance that was fading until obviously yeah. Cristiano pops up with a winner. Um, no, I don't know. I cannot tell you that myself, but you're going to have to look at the, the game and video again with the, with the manager, with the team to see what we can do better and what we didn't do uh, uh, good today or what we should do better on the second half. I mean, I think uh, second half, like we didn't get the, the full pass, the, um, the nice passing, the keep the ball, the movement I think wasn't there. Um, we lost few balls also by myself, like few balls when uh, we should have kept it. And we just gave them a bit of confidence. I think that's why they score. But um, after we start playing again and we go to the corner, corner and score this uh, winning goal. What will this do for the atmosphere around the club, Paul? You've already referenced the atmosphere created among the fans, so among the fans and in the dressing room. It's a boost. It's a boost. Um, like, I, like I said, we needed that. We needed that to go again. It was uh, the game today, just to go back because we won top four, and uh, they were the the opponent that uh, were looking for the top four also. So it was a good game and a good win for us today. Well played, thank you. Thank you. Well done, Paul. Well, Paul Pogba sort of talking about the fact that at times Manchester United just stopped playing. He said, "I, I don't really know why, but surely the players would know better than anyone else why that happened." They've been doing it now all season. The on and off in games, playing moments, then they go bad for 20 minutes, then they let a game drift, nothing happens, then they come alive and something, you know, a great goal goes in. They're just so inconsistent and unreliable and you can't really trust, you know, before a game today, you say, how are Manchester United going to do? You haven't got a clue. You haven't got a clue what's going to happen. You know they're going to concede chances, you know they're going to concede goals. Dea might make three, four good saves, he might not, he might let one through his legs and he might lose the game. And to be fair, we sat here tonight with Manchester United winning because of a special Cristiano Ronaldo performance, but it could easily have been the other way. We were talking about a Tottenham victory because that performance wasn't great overall, but they've got over the line and they, it's important. It was an important one today because obviously Arsenal playing tomorrow. Arsenal are big favourites for that fourth spot. If United had lost today, would have been flush on the forehead for a guy in Dwight Grant. Sometimes you don't know exactly where you stand into. Well, Ralph, there's always a Cristiano Ronaldo question. Hopefully, you'll understand it this evening. How good was your match winner this evening? Well, at least since I arrived, his best performance, but not only because he scored three goals, two brilliant goals. Um, also, the second one was a perfect uh, um, vertical ball from Nemanja Matic and the best possible ball square play from, from Jaden. But he was also, energetically, he, he was good really today. Uh, Cristiano, he was part of the whole team uh, when we had to defend and we had to defend a lot. So, uh, yeah top performance by him but also by the rest of the team so after all the noise of the last week and surrounding derby day did you have half an idea that that cristiano ronaldo might show up this evening that he would play that well well i didn't expect him to score three goals but i expected him to score that's why i decided to play him although he only resumed for training on thursday but uh, also his training uh, session on Thursday was uh, so good that I decided to bring him from the, st from the start and not have him on the bench and in the end it was uh, the right decision. It certainly was. So did you have half a mind to start him as a substitute until you saw that training session? Well, he didn't train for a week, uh, and I was not sure if he, if his hip flexor was 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 good enough uh, to to let him play. 
I had a conversation with him uh, before the training session on Friday and he told me that he's yeah, fully fit, that he can play. Uh, and that's why he, he started. He was in the starting 11. Okay, so what did you make of the, the whole team this evening? How good was the performance, did you think? Yeah, it was exactly the kind of reaction that we expected uh, from the team after the poor performance in the second half against City. Um, coming back after two weeks. Obviously, there was an incident last week when he was away for a few days. If he did do that without permission, then he's out of order and the manager over the last few months. So in terms of the culture of the club, that's unacceptable. But you also have to manage the player and say, listen, when he's fit and available and he's in that form, then he's got to play for Man United because ultimately they need results. They need to get in that top four. They have to look at the bigger picture. The manager there is probably thinking, I just need to get over the next few months. I need to try and get in the top four. Certainly try and win against Atletico and, and see what happens from there and not get too bogged down with the bigger picture. Just get over the line in some of these matches because Ronaldo's not going to change. He's going to challenge you, but that's what the good, good players do. But you have to stroke their ego a little bit, but also let them know who the manager is. But when you're only in there for a few months, that's very, very difficult. I know it's easy for us to sit here and say, you've got to sort that out. But when you've got big personalities like that and your contract's only for another two or three months, players will take advantage of that. It's an interesting one. And Manchester United do need to look forward rather than to the, the past. But you have personal experience in different ways of how Sir Alex Ferguson would manage big personalities in the in the dressing room. And it would feel as though once a player got to a point where the personality he felt was too big for the football club, it would be the player who, who wasn't part of it anymore. Does it feel that there's a different power dynamic at Manchester United now? Oh, absolutely. Sir Alex Ferguson had control because of his success. Um, yeah, but Gary, it doesn't mean to say he didn't make mistakes. I didn't say he didn't make mistakes. I know you so he's a bit of an impossible position because he hasn't got the strength of control. What he does have, if we believe what was, we were told when he came over, is a two-year consultancy agreement where he could say to the next manager, this is what I've seen in my three, four, five months at the club and this is what I've not liked. So those players have to be careful if he has got any real power with selecting the next manager. Gary, you know that you say there though, how does, how, what message does that send out for the rest of the players? For Christian, look, he's a superstar. He's an icon, of course he is, but what he did last week, supposedly, what does that send to the no, rest it, of the players? It, 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 it obviously is a weakness. I, I think there's big problems in that dressing room. I really do at this moment in time, between the sort of what would be characters in the dressing room that exist. I don't think it's great at all. I think, it, to be fair, if you're Tottenham have got one in front today at any point in that game, you just see it, you just see it capitulate quite quickly. I think the strength, you know, it's... it's there's not a deep spirit in that dressing room, I don't think, that you see in games. The performances are very patchy. You get the impression when you see Ralph Ranieck's interviews that he's not enjoying the team that much. It's not really in his name or in his spirit or how he wants to play. He's just trying to get through to the end of the season the best he can and do the best job he can. And he's plastering over cuts and wounds that I think are deep. It doesn't look, yeah, it doesn't look a good dressing room. And we criticised Man United last week and people said, well, they were just up against a really good team against Man City. No, but uh, they've given up in other matches. They've given up against Watford in the second half when Oli lost the job. They gave up against Liverpool. They've got previous, but the manager has to still stroke their egos and try and manage it and get over the line. And the reason is, and it's not a good dressing, but they've got some talented players, but that's the reason why Man United are struggling to get to fourth and they're getting beaten by Middlesbrough in the cup and they're getting beaten by West Ham at home in the cup. That that spirit and that fight is not there in this group of players. We saw a little bit of tonight, we saw brilliance from Ronaldo, but the problems are still there for Man United, and that's why, at this moment in time, Man United are competing for fourth position. That's the best it's going to be for a while. And maybe that's part of the challenge that Rangnick is, is talking about, is, you know, if, if there, there was um, a, a disagreement in, in midweek, if there was a disagreement about whether or not he was going to take part in the City game, he then comes back and the reaction will always be good on the pitch. So, so maybe... It's, you know, yep. if you take, if you take... Yeah, but the problem over the next few weeks, Kelly, might be t tonight is everyone's happy because they won the game and Ronaldo's got a hat-trick. But in a few weeks, he might have a game. He think, I'm tempted to leave Ronaldo out because I want to play a certain way or whatever it might be. Or Ronaldo might need a couple of days rest. And he leaves him out. Is he worried that all the players looking going, well, what's Ronaldo going to do now? And it's just not Ronaldo. If he's got other senior players who aren't the greatest pros on the planet, then the young players at Man United would look at it and go, is that how you behave? And when you've got a manager who hasn't got that power of control, you filter through to the players, the younger players, and all of a sudden this, I use the word culture, it's players getting into bad habits. The young lads looking at the senior players going, oh, is that how you behave? Going, no, that's not how you behave. You're going to have to have some spirit on Tuesday against mm, Atletico. They were terrible over in Madrid. And there's one thing you have to show as a group of players. When things aren't going right, 
you guys have gone through it and you won everything. What you have is some spirit. 15 minutes in a game, 20 minutes a game, we roll our sleeves up, we dig it out, dig out oh, they're up against, against it. Man. Do you know what I mean? yeah. They're up against it on Tuesday, so today it's gone alright. Guys have said that, but it's when the going gets tough, and it was tough in Madrid, and it's going to be tough on Tuesday. But there's still that, there's still a moment of quality, but got quality that won't be enough, They've still maybe got for that. the next round. It's not going to be enough just to get yeah. through, you've got to go through games. Last week, they haven't got as much quality as Manchester City, so you need that space. And the two teams at the top at the moment, the managers have got complete control in their clubs. Complete trust, faith, belief, all the way through, you know, Pep can leave out uh, Raheem Sterling last Sunday in the derby. No one bats an eyelid, put, brought Jack, Jack Grealish in. No one thought that would probably happen before the game brings him. No one even thinks about it, just get on with it, because he's got complete control, no one questions him. Manchester United haven't got that, and they haven't had that for a number of years. But if, if players are left out, and they, I expect players to be upset, and I'm sure the Liverpool players, the Man City players, when they're missing big games, they're upset. Just how you manage that. That's, the difference is, well, they get results and all right. Yeah, which so obviously, yeah, that covers the cracks a little bit. But it's how the players react as well, Roy, to be honest with you. I think the worst thing about a player being left out and not accepting that decision, the thing I always used to think when I was in the dressing room, is that it's completely disrespectful to the players who've been left out the previous week, and they've come in, you know, you might be playing a lot, and all of a sudden, you've been left out. What about the lads who've been sat on the bench for the last four weeks, mm -hmm. and the guy you might have come in to take your place? He's done it. Who's yeah. watched you? That's disrespectful. He, That's the bit I don't like about it. He's done it at Brentford. Remember, he was taken off against Brentford. Yeah. And yeah. the manager's obviously looking at the bigger picture, yeah, yeah. there was a game coming up. And uh, Ronaldo was upset, which is fine, but 20 minutes later he was still upset, you might be upset. I don't mind you being upset, but again, there's lads come on, and actually the lad would come on, I think it might have been the younger the Lang he actually scored. Yeah. So you're like, calm down, keep the head, it could, it'd be upset, but draw the line somewhere where you go, listen, at some stage you cross that line where you really are disrespecting your teammates, that's where... That's where that's when the, the real trouble starts. But I think that, that that's the case though. That if you don't accept being left out, obviously you might have a problem with the manager. But your mate that's gone in to play for you, you've got to make sure you look after him. You've got to make sure you wish him all the best. We've all been left out at times where we thought that's harsh. But you go into that dressing room and the guy who's took your place, you go and say, "Come on, have a good one today." And that's when you've got a great dressing room. Manchester United haven't got that dressing room at this moment in time. I think they'll probably be sat on the bench and watching their teammates, thinking, "I hope the guy that's gone in for me has a bad game today." I, th I think there's a bit of that. I generally don't think he's that strong. Gary, do you think Cristiano, when he came back on the first day, I said he's not going to be able to play every single minute of the game? Of every game. But I don't. Do my, yeah, but my, it's the games he was left out on. He was left. He said about him when he left. It's hard to handle sometimes that single-mindedness, that drive, that personality that is so. I don't want to use the word selfish, but there is that element of you know it's about him. It's about him. He's got to score the goal. He's got to score the winner. He's got to be on the pitch for the final penalty. He's got to take the free kick. And that's his brilliance. And that's why he's the, one of the greatest players that this game has ever seen. The best player we may ever have played with. But there is a challenge towards the end of his career when he's not accepting maybe the difficulties of being left out or not being the star man because there might be another player in the team. And that's where these challenges that Ralph Ranić just alluded to have come from there. But tonight it feels like a moment to celebrate him, but it doesn't take away the bigger question that occurs in the next few weeks. Tuesday night's a huge game. He will play against Atletico Madrid. He will play. But it could easily go wrong on Tuesday night because this Manchester United dressing isn't that strong at this moment in time. It's not. Equally, he could get the winner. He could get the winner. Manchester United and blows all the way. The yeah. quarterfinals. But even when he scores a hat trick, which he has done to get Manchester United into fourth place in the in the table today, which is their aim as, as things stand at the end of the season. It just takes one comment from Rangnick, who talks about it being a challenge, and you've described it there quite calmly as why the challenge exists and when you're dealing with a unique personality, but, these challenges but come, the but package, suddenly yeah. we, we go from talking about Ronaldo and his footballing brilliance to But that's what Ronaldo, we have the to problem. do, Kelly. But the, fa the fans have left tonight here happy. Yeah, mm. yeah, they are. The, the, that's the bottom line. I know we have to sit here and discuss it in the bigger picture, but Man United fans have gone home tonight and they're happy and they've, saw, they've seen a genius live, especially people who obviously got to the game. They've seen him like, they've seen him score a hat trick. Let them enjoy that. And it's up to us to analyse it. But he came back here to bring some entertainment, get their fans on their feet, and he done that tonight. So that's what we have to give him credit for. He's not perfect, Ronaldo. He's got one or two flaws, like we've discussed, if he's left out. But as part of the package, you have to take the good and the bad. You take him every day of the week. Another brilliant sportsman, Tom Brady, has been pitch side at Old Trafford to Patrick Davison. We're not quite sure. We'll try and clear that up for you. Uh, but yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo with a hat trick in Manchester United's 3 2 win over Tottenham.